and it keeps in mind that it got the route request from A. C receives the route request, realizes it hasn't seen it before, doesn't, uh, C at this point knows that it has a path to B. So this is the route. So when C receives the route request, C remembers that it receives received the route request from, from B. And it sends a message back saying, I have a route. B knows that, uh, or B receiving this message knows that it received that message from A and just passes it back along. So at this point, we now have a route from A to B. So the message that they're passing back, uh, like we gave a pretty strict definition of the request. Does the response or like the answer have a specific uh, like format? Yes, it does, um, but it's less important. So okay, fair enough. That's fine, but it's basically just, hey, I found a route, and it's basically are the people you yeah. have to go through to get to it, or? Uh, it's basically, I found a route, and here's the hop number, because, uh, I mean, if B receives, it's actually called a, uh, a route reply. So B receives the route reply from C, so therefore B knows that its next hop in this route is C. Okay. B then sends a route reply to A, saying I found a route, so therefore A knows that that route reply came from B, so therefore its next hop on that route is B. So it knows, it knows the way to D and B. Exactly. And it so has this many hops. Exactly. Okay. And now so B knows it's part of a route. C knows it's part of the route. Exactly. So all, okay. Exactly. So that's now an active route. Gotcha. And the route reply has a hop count so it can hit so they can determine which ones. Exactly. So if there so happens that that node is directly connected to D, then it knows that this route has three hops, that route has two hops, and it, it just uses the one with two hops. And will it just completely discard the three hop one? Yes. Whereas B might still like B still knows it's on a route to D. That's right. Just in case it has to go there. That's right. Yeah. So yeah, and, and then B will keep D's most recent sequence number, so that it can compare uh, freshness of routes. So does it always judge the best route by hop number? Yes, always by hop. Number. Okay. So regardless of a like a freshness rating. So very quickly, um, so to test freshness, um, if, so in this example, the final hop was the actual destination. If that's not true, if the destination was over here, and this was merely part of a route, part of an existing route. The freshness of that of that route is tested, and the way we do that, as I said a second ago, is compare destination, compare the DSN, and if the route request. DSN is greater than the route DSN. Assume the route is stale and don't use. In that case, so at D, if D thinks it has a route and D receives the route request, it would not. Uh, it would not reply with, uh, excuse me, if D receives a route request with a larger DSN than it already it already holds as part of its route, then D realizes that its route is stale, and instead of re responding with a route reply, it'll simply continue forwarding the route request. So in other words, it'll just ignore its own its own route. <coughs> so. Uh, if a route is found, a 
wrote reply R R B P message is returned to the source. Well, what happened with the last S one of an existing one? Nobody else forward their own last request number. Um so never get a reply. It's impossible that you would never get a reply. So assuming uh, if this if this road is fresh, then the assumption is that it's active. So assuming that's true, once you discover this route and it's fresher than your DSN, not fresh. if it's not fresher, then then this route is ignored and D just forwards the route request. Well, what if none of the other ones that get forwarded are ever prepared and then the last one is ever prepared? Eventually, you'll actually get the destination, assuming it's connected. And the destination. And the, de the destination is by by definition. <laughs> yeah. It has to be. It has to be fresher. Exactly. Okay. Um, so the route reply, as I showed you in this example, is propagated back towards the source, and that's what sets up the route. Yes. When we're looking for a route, so every time a new DS, like a, for a new route, a new DS and sequence number will be issued for that. So, and it's gonna be like, is there a way, like, for example, if I use the last sequence number was only five, how how am I gonna know that what sequence number to use? Like, am I gonna increment this by one and? You mean and, from the source? Yeah, from the source. Yeah, yeah, I mean, every time every time you send a packet, you should increment your uh, source number. Your, your source sequence number. Yeah. And you're uh, incrementing the source number individually without knowing what are the source numbers in the network part. Exactly. In fact, that's the point because uh, other devices uh, are keeping their most recent uh, source sequence number that you broadcast. So you should be moving on. That, that indicates that your own information is fresher. So you don't care what they have. Uh, all that is is a measure of how recent their information is compared with yours. So that's it. Okay. Anyway, I am out of time. Just one. I want to uh, say, write this down. Uh, more than one route. One that's capped, you keep the lowest hop count. Okay, that's the last point that I want to make.